Hello everybody and welcome to the Azu Anti-Cheat 2.0 setup video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. If you have all of your mods and you have Bepinex installed, we're going to go into Bepinex plugins. And in this case, uh, because I have an R2 Modman profile, it does go by author dash mod name. So when you download the mod via R2 or manually, you should be provided with a DLL and a English translation file. Translation file can be anywhere in the plugins folder. It does not matter. It should be able to find that. But inside of that translation file, we're going to be able to see all of the keys that we have set up and what they are being translated to. If you need to translate or add your own translations, you can control C and control V to copy and paste the file. And let's say we wanted to change this to German. We now have a German file which will be recognized if your language is set to German. So configure your keys and values however you wish here, and it will load into the mod for you. So by default, you get the DLL. And by default, you get the YAML file. We are going to boot up our game. We want all 33 of these mods here to be forced onto the client. So I'm going to boot the game up with this current profile with the anti-cheat and everything installed. And by the time we reach the main menu, we'll have a nice file for us inside of a folder called the Azu anti cheat folder, which will give us all of our mods that have loaded and all of the hashes, and then we can copy and paste that straight to the whitelist onto the server, and we'll be able to force all of these mods onto the client, no problems. So once we're at the main menu, We can go and look in here, and I'm almost at the main menu. We have an Azu anti cheat folder, we saw it. And guaranteed, by the time you get to the main menu and you can see your character here, you know that everything's loaded. We can jump client side, go into the Azu anti cheat folder inside of plugins, and see the mymods.yaml and see all of our mods that have loaded for this profile. You can control A and control C. We're going to jump to the server and the server itself is not booted up yet, but it's gonna be in the same file structure and file format. We are gonna be able to jump into Bepinex config and I just booted the server, so it's not gonna have the file here, but if we refresh, we're gonna have the Azu anti-cheat configuration file. If you are coming from a previous version of the anti-cheat, make sure that all of your files are fresh and freshly generated. As an anti-cheat config did lose some options, but I'll show you why here in a minute. But it also gained some options. It gained a limits section, which allows you to configure the health limit, stamina limit, carry weight limit, and max damage limit. These, if anyone bypasses the 55,000 damage and does more than 55,000, it will instantly flag as a cheat and kick them. You also have the new option of instant ban. This does not ban for mismatch mods, only by cheats. So if you are flagged for a cheat and not by a mismatch mod, it will instantly add that user to the ban list. So requested features have been added here. And the moderator configs that most of you are probably familiar with from the previous versions have been removed from this file, but they've been added elsewhere. So once our server is completely booted up, we're going to jump to the server and refresh our files one more time. The naming convention of the gray list, moderator list, webhook, and whitelisted mods YAML have changed. They all are now prefixed with Azu anti cheat underscore. This is to guarantee that all of these files are going to be right next to each other, including right next to the default configuration. So we grabbed all of our stuff from the client side mymods.yaml. We've got that sitting in our clipboard. So we are going to jump to the server. Go to our whitelisted mods because I do want to enforce all of these on the client. And we're just going to paste it in. Okay, and then save the file. Keep note of all of the comments that I leave for you in these files. It is advised that you delete all of the comments and the only thing in this file be the mod names and the hashes, of course. Uh, the hashes will change for every single version or every single manipulation of that mod's DLL, so keep that in mind. This will enforce the exact version that you have onto the client. So we'll close out that file, and without further ado, we'll be able to jump straight into our server. 
We should be able to join no issues. Uh, if the user is on the ban list, they won't be able to get in. But we're going to jump straight in with our whitelist. We have all of the same mods that the server is requiring for us. So we're going to be able to jump right into things. I'll skip right into the loading screen. All right. So we just passed the loading screen. We are now in game, no problems. We are able to play as if everything is normal. I made some performance improvements as well. So that means that a few things will be checked a little bit less frequently, but will still instantly detect if it happens. So we're in the server. We got in just fine. So we are now going to make one of our mods a gray listed mod which is the exact same thing as doing it via the whitelist, but we actually don't have to do anything crazy. So if I wanted to take, let's not open it in Notepad, it's ill-advised, so make sure that you're opening it in something that's UTF-8 supported, Notepad++ is a must. So we know that Chatter, Chatter is a chat mod. It is typically just a client-side only mod. I don't necessarily want to enforce that on the client. It's an optional thing that they can have. So we're going to copy this, delete it from the whitelist, save the file, jump into the gray list itself, and paste this in. So that is exactly how you transfer anything from the gray list to the whitelist. Gray list is anything that you want to be an optional mod. So make sure that this hash and everything matches make sure that you're doing copying and pasting never type into the file manually always do a copy and paste from everything that you know can be a copy and paste okay so we have that mod into our gray list here and we're going to be able to join the server no problemo uh, but first i want to show you a little bit more of the other files that we can find on the server here so the webhook itself this is a discord webhook file you can open this file and take a look. So by default, I give you an example server and a hook. I also give you a little bit of comments. Make sure you read these. But let's say I wanted a webhook. You would remove this and you would remove this. So as you can see, it's not commented out anymore. The example server is just the name for this hook. So if you have multiple hooks that you want to send the cheat detections to, uh, multiple discords maybe, these are names to help you differentiate them. So I can say, you know, Azimat's server, like Azimat server here. The hook property cannot change. This is what is specifying where the hook actually is and make sure that this is in the same format. So if you were to create a new hook, make sure you are doing, once again, copy paste, okay? And as you can see, it messed up the format a little bit here. You just delete that top line. And now they're the exact same. So. We have a webhook set up. We've called it Azimat Server. We've got a nice webhook here. So any cheat detections will now go to this Discord webhook. You can set up a Discord webhook by just going in, right-clicking on your server, server settings, integrations, and going into webhooks and creating a brand new one. And then once you have one, you just copy the web URL and paste it right in. And you'll paste it right here. So this is an example. Please replace this with one that you are willing to use for yourself. So as I've mentioned, the moderator configurations have moved. Moderator configurations have actually moved into the moderator list file. You guys have asked for a specific feature of let's make per moderator permissions. So Steam 64 ID, which this is just a blank example of a number. Uh, but replace this with a Steam64 ID, and then let's say I wanted this particular moderator to bypass um, Explore Map, Console, God Mode in this case, uh, and Damage. We're going to be able to grab, and just for giggles, I'm going to grab my own Steam64 ID and show you. So we're going to be able to specify this. I should be able to bypass all the damage limits, and I should be able to bypass God Mode. So the damage limit, we're going to set this at 5 for now. So anything more than 5 damage, I should get kicked from the server. We are going to quit the game just to guarantee everything's set up for ourselves. And reboot. And I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, and while this continues to boot, uh, I will note that all of the changes that we make up here 
are instantly reflected. You do not actually have to reboot the server. As you've seen, I have not rebooted the server. I've only rebooted my client to guarantee that we're all starting fresh. So I'm going to join. We have added myself to the moderator list. We've given myself specific permissions, and we've also got a nice webhook set up. We've got a uh, gray list set up, so I should be able to get right into the server without any issues. So that is how to set up the gray list. That is how to set up the all of the files that we can find on the server here. And we're just going to show you a few cheat detections and what that actually looks like for us. So if we are loading into the game, we're going to hit the load screen here and we'll spawn in. So I am on the moderator list. We can confirm this by looking at our log. Our log here says as you anti cheat moderator user found in moderator list. And we have on the server inside of the moderator list file. We'll see that my ID is here. It was found. So we're going to be able to say that I am bypassing the damage. And we did set our damage. We'll double check that. But we did set our damage at 5. So anything more than 5 damage points should kick me from the server. But I should be able to bypass it because I have it specified as I am a moderator that can. So as you can see, I've done 9,000 damage there with no problems. But let's say the admin decided uh, five is a little, little too low and moderators should not be able to bypass this, right? But let's say they didn't change that vial, but they don't want me specifically to be able to bypass damage anymore. So as we can see, I can bypass God mode. So I'll turn on God mode and then I'll turn and hit another tree to show you that my damage bypass has been revoked. So we'll go here and turn on God mode. We are not being flagged for a cheat. We're A-OK. -okay. But we're going to do the exact same thing here, and we're going to hit a tree. So anything more than five points of damage, even though I am a moderator, moderator-specific configs say that I should not be able to bypass this anymore. So if we hit the tree, we notice that I am flagged for a cheat. I've been kicked, massive damage detected. And because we had our webhook set up, we're going to be able to see that in our webhook here. I've done a ton of damage, and this is uh, what, what I'm doing here to output to myself. So because it's the same webhook as what I have as default, this is going to show me just zero instead of my actual Steam ID. So we can see that I hit a tree with 32,000 damage. Now, if we are no longer in the moderator list, but let's say we have a mismatched mod, right? So I'm just going to change my ID here to be a 9 instead of the 8. So I should no longer count as a moderator. And we still have the max damage here, but we want to be kicked. Let's say I updated my mods, the server did not, or the server did and I did not. So if we change something on the whitelist or the gray list, either one, so the anti-cheat, for example, if the server has this as a different hash than what the client has, we're going to join the server. We're going to be able to see that we're going to get kicked. It's going to tell us that we are missing mods. Missing does not necessarily 100% mean missing. It just means that you are missing what the server is requiring. So this could be due to the fact that it is a mismatch versus a missing mod so you could have it installed but it could be missing what it's saying is is that you're missing the server's version of this mod so as we see we're going to hit the load screen we're going to get kicked it says you're missing mods that your server requires please check with your admins read your log or redownload the pack so we did notice that inside of our log if you happen to have uh, had that pulled up somewhere else we're going to see a red error pop up and say that the azu anti-cheat is our missing mod so we know that there is something wrong with the anti-cheat on our client, right? We know that the hash itself is different than what the server shows. So if we were to update that on the server, I'd be able to get right in or vice versa. If it was a problem with the client's mod not being updated, you can update the client mod and you should be just fine. So now with the 
localization, we saw that it did say everything that popped up there in text, you can change in the localization if you want to. Uh, moderator list, I was not in the moderator list, so I did not bypass. Uh, moderators do bypass the DLL check, but they do have to have all of the mods that are required on the whitelist. So they can have additional mods, but they have to have all of the mods that are on the whitelist. So that is a very quick overview of how to set this up, what this all looks like, um, all the configuration files. So do copy paste, do not type in these files unless you know exactly what you're doing. Uh, so if you were to set up a new moderator, make sure that you highlight this and copy and paste it in. Make sure that you're not messing up the formatting or anything like that. Should be very simple. If you type into the file, uh, make sure it's only you know changing values from true to false. It's not changing the hashes or, or messing with anything like I've done. Because as you can see, that simple little letter change here from a, a B to a C made it to where I can no longer connect as a client. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you do get flagged for cheats, they are instantaneous. The client will see a big box. It'll pop up and say, hey, you've been flagged for a cheat. And I'll show you that really fast. But any cheat that gets detected will be immediate. I've made some performance improvements, as I've mentioned, to actually make things not check as often and therefore be able to be a little bit better on FPS, but will still instantly detect at the moment that it detects it. So I'm going to skip straight into the server and then we'll show you a cheat detection. All right, so cheat detected as you anti cheat. So we are making sure that we are no longer having the same mods. So our mod was different this time. It wasn't a difference in DLLs. It wasn't an instant kick. It was that we had an extra mod that the server says that we should not. So in this case, I did make the Azu anti cheat that mod. So that is a quick detection on what they are going to see client side and how they can get that configured themselves and be able to join. Instant ban can also be set up to instantly ban someone as long as it's not a mismatched version. Uh, and if we go and look in Discord, that cheat detection that I just had was right here. We'll see our Steam information and the mod that was used as your anti-cheat. Um, and we are using a banned mod. So this was a mod that was not found on the whitelist, not found on the gray list, but the client still had it installed. So keep all that in mind. Be gentle with your clients because sometimes it could be as simple as the admin actually made the mistake and it's not the client's fault. So without further ado, guys, I'll see you a different time. Thanks.